What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. As always, we are back, me and Anthony, with a This or That series. And we are going to be talking about a couple guys that, you know, we, we're running backs. So we're going to go to 23 class again uh, that are kind of interesting because I, I, I told Anthony pre-show, they're icky. And, and be, just because they just, like, we don't know how to expect in terms of, like, I think they're – I think they're both different prospects. And I think that they both, you know, one's been highly productive. One hasn't been as productive, but they're going pretty much at the same rate. I think that kind of should give you a little bit of pause when you're drafting these guys. And that's Tank Bigsby from Auburn and Sean Tucker from Syracuse. And I think both of these guys have some truthers out there. I'll be honest. They, they really do. Like you're going to get those Auburn fans, SEC fans there. Tucker's got some weird guys out there that believe that he could be running back one in the class. I've seen that. I've seen that talked about. Right now, though, as far as ADP goes, Tank's going as running back six, 204. Sean's going to running back eight. But again, ADP is weird in terms of with Sean. Like I was talking to Anthony, some guys draft him in the first round. They think he's a late first. I've seen him in Debbie Mox, the mocks that we did, 112, 111. So they're really across the board here. And when you're looking at production wise, you know, Auburn, you know, Tank Bigsby, he, he, I, he had the, did he not have the quietest thousand yards last year, Anthony? Oh, like a total afterthought. It, like people, you would think it never even happened. Yeah, like no one even like they talked about him having a down year, and the only thing really they talk about is him not get or him getting that first down or going out of bounds against um, Alabama, which kind of lost in the game. But he had ten touchdowns. He did have twenty one receptions. Tucker, on the other hand, I mean, he I don't want to say broke out, but fourteen hundred yards rushing, two hundred forty six attempts, twelve touchdowns, twenty receptions, two hundred fifty five yards. When you look at these numbers, I mean, you kind of gravitate toward, gravitate towards Tucker, but. What do you think it is with Tucker that people kind of, I, I mean, we're going to get into the film. We're going to talk about it, but he has the numbers, right? 1500 yards. Like, what do you think? Why is he not going in the first round all the time? I think he's not going in the first round all the time. Mostly at, just as a product of the guys ahead of him, right? There's some guys with pretty special, like sort of dual threat ability yeah. that pretty consistently go ahead of him. Um, obviously, you know, Bijan, Travion Henderson, those guys. Uh, and then some of the guys we talked on, Talk about recently too, Jameer yeah. Gibbs and Zach Evans. So he gets dinged a little bit for that. I think that even though, like we saw some utilization as a pass catcher, more than I think people give him credit for. I mean, you know, 250 yards is you know, more in a season than some of these guys coming to the NFL. Yeah. Um, but I do think he's, and we'll get into it further, but I think he's got to continue to show some growth there and continue to show some growth as, as a pass protector for a back of his size as well. I think he's like leaves a little bit wanting in both of those areas. Can I give you my uh, my theory on Sean Tucker and why I'm concerned about him? It's, it's kind of That's a weird theory. Jeff kind of talked about it, but I'm, I'm going to steal it too. We saw all this movement from like, you know, Gibbs went to Alabama. There's teams out there that need running backs. Why didn't Tucker get any calls? Like, why, why we're in the transfer portal. He just had 1,400 yards rushing. Syracuse is going to be god-awful again this year. Like, why didn't some bigger school from the SEC, the Big Ten, some school that needs a running back, why didn't they go get him? I think that's really kind of that. I feel like that's kind of part of my concern too. Is like, why didn't someone go after this kid? You know, in the transporter, they have the NIL money, but no one that needs a running back was based. Now nah, we're good. Like, I think that concerns me. Am I crazy? Or is that like, is that a real concern? No, I think it matters. Like it, it is an interesting thing, especially like, you know, there's no reason not to anymore. Right. Like you said, yeah. these, these big programs to figure out how to manipulate NIL already and the transfer portal. So uh, it is something that's worth, you know, making mention of for sure. It's definitely notable. Well, think about it. Like, I mean, Georgia, we all kind of penciled in Kendall Milton and stuff, but why, why wouldn't Georgia just go, Hey, we need a running back. Why don't you come here? You know, when you're looking at, yeah. at, at, at the, at, at the landscape, Notre Dame needs a running back. Don't they? I mean, obviously, you know, injuries have happened, but why didn't Notre Dame say, Hey, why don't you come here? And, Oklahoma, Oklahoma needs a running back. Like there's so many schools out there that could have probably used them. Now, Sean has said that he's like loyal, but let's be honest. No one's loyal in NIL money. Like, yeah, Sean, that's nice. But like, my guy, Sean Tucker is loyal. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so I think that, I mean, for me, like when I'm looking at the landscape, like if these power five, like big power five schools are like, hey, we don't need Sean Tucker. Is he a product of Syracuse? Is he a product of that volume that he's getting? I think that is the question mark that I have with kind of him in general. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not a hater of Sean Tucker. I'm just concerned. I think that that's my biggest thing with both these guys. But let's just thought the tape. So w let's start with Tank. W w I'll stop shitting on, on Sean right now. So Syracuse. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know if Syracuse has fans, but if you're out there, you're probably really mad at me. Um, all right, let's look at let's look at Tank. What do you what do you like about Tank? Because he kind of went down last year. I don't know if he should have. Yeah, 
it's like I said, kind of similar to Tucker. He is just buried by some guys ahead of him. But you're watching on tape right now. You better bring an army to tackle tank, tackle tank Bigsby. Uh, yeah. Like arm tackles aren't going to do it. You're not bringing this guy down by yourself or uh, very easily. Like you better be prepared for a fight. He's tough. He's physical. I think you know if you're looking for a power runner, this is your guy. Like there's not a lot to to dislike about Tank in that regard. Uh, I think he's got a little more wiggle and long speed like you're seeing here than he gets credit for sometimes. Like he's not going to be confused for a, a track star or, you know, prime Chris Johnson or anything like that. But for his size and for his kind of uh, tenacity and toughness, I think he's plenty fast. He's a goal line threat. There, there's a lot to like about him. And as silly as it might sound, we talked about this a little bit at uh, the wide receiver position a couple episodes ago, but I still think size matters, especially at running back. Like yeah. NFL teams are going to want a guy that can hold up to the workload and not comping this player to um, this guy from 2022. But the NFL ended up liking Zamir White a lot more than I expected them to at one point. I think a lot of people expected him to. So a guy with a nose for the end zone that can take a pounding inside the tackles is going to get uh, a, a, a worthwhile investment probably from an NFL club, I think. Yeah, I, I like Tank. Like, I, I don't understand, you know, when you're looking at the depth chart, like, you know, people gave him crap last year. Now, he's in Brian Harson's offense, and Brian Harson did not have a good year last year. Yeah, he may be sleeping with his assistant coach, good lady that he brought from Boise State. He had a lot of problems going on there in terms of, like, his, like people are leaving. Tank even entered the transfer portal, member, but he, yeah. he backed out. Like, Jarquez Hunter's there. I'm not a big Hunter guy. Like, we saw Tank take that workload away from Hunter as the season went. Like, they, they even said they were trying to use um hunter more in non-conference and bigsby in the sec and said hey we're mm -hmm. going to use them so i think we're going to see bigsby more of a volume this year because i think that that backfired on them a little bit plus the quarterback situation zach calzada is probably going to win the job maybe like that scares <laughs> me like um you know robbie ashford's there maybe robbie but robbie's not that great either so they're going to lean on him a little bit so i think his production probably will go up like and so i like that about tank i think he's i think he's a very solid runner like i, I don't yeah. have any like anything crazy about him i think sometimes his vision can lack but i don't know necessarily if that's an offensive line issue or not like he's very solid but the problem with me with tank is what the hell is his draft capital gonna be because i think you mentioned zamir we like zamir zamir got what fourth fifth round was that where he went i forget off the top i forget where exactly it was i want to say fourth round but yeah. i i could be wrong so it's it so it's in there right so now so tank is what borderline fourth third so when we're looking at like where that borderline is, I think that's what concerns me the most in this class is like, where's his, his upside going to be there. He's a very solid runner, but what is he going to run? Like, where's his 40 going to be now? If he can get in the four, four, five area with his size, then okay, I'll start believing it. But if he's in that four five range, I'm a little bit more nervous. Yeah. I think he's got a chance to maybe, you know, with good testing and, you know, staying healthy to sneak into, you know, back into round three, yeah, eight day two, something like that. Um, that scares me though. That that that, that, that talk scares me a little bit because you you want some of the back end. They usually don't back end. Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe he back, does more than back end because yeah, I agree true. about Hunter. I don't think Hunter is a real threat this year. I think yeah. he's a fine player, but not somebody that should be taking you know a substantial amount of work away from Tank Bigsby. Um, and hey, doesn't have the crazy amount of injury concerns that somebody like Zamir White did either. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Tank's been relatively healthy for the most part yeah. like when you watch him play. And yeah, side note on Auburn's offense, go get Demari Alston. Don't don't waste your pick on Hunter. All right, yeah. let's uh let's go to our boy Sean. You can you can make fun of him or you can talk about him first. I already kind of crapped on. What do you think with Sean as a runner? Okay, I think I like him more than you do. You like him more than me, yes, for sure. 100%. You I think I like him more than, more than you do. I really like Sean Tucker, honestly. I think I like a lot of the same things I do about Tank Bigsby. He's got good sides. He can run inside. I think he's tailor-made for a zone scheme. I think a team running zone concepts at the NFL level will love Sean Tucker, and he's got long speed. Uh, I love that. A big back that can still you know, make the house call I think is exciting. The things, like I mentioned earlier, I don't think he can't – like isn't – I don't want to say he's not a good pass catcher or that he's not a good pass protector, but I feel like he – I, I need to see him get more opportunity there, like more reps, because he looks almost unsure of himself. Like as a runner, I think that his vision needs some work at times, but I think he is a confident runner. 
And you don't see that same like kind of confidence as a pass catcher or even as a pass protector, which is disappointing, I think, for somebody that big uh, or with kind of prototypical size. If he's going to have three down ability, um, whether he can catch passes or not, he's going to need to be able to pass protect at a reliable level. And I know people kind of snark at it for fantasy purposes, but and, you know, you can think pass protection doesn't matter for fantasy football, but if it keeps the guy off the field on third down, he'll never develop into the pass catcher that you hope he might. Um, so I do like Sean Tucker. I think he's got some stuff to work on, but I think he's going to get a monster workload again. And I think he could easily, you know, put up another 14, 1500 yards on the ground. I think the only thing that I'm concerned of, and this is my biggest complaint about Sean. I like Sean. I don't want people to think I don't like Sean. I think he's fine running back. I don't know if he's a four five, five guy or a four, six guy. Where do you like, mm. I don't know what his speed is. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. If he could you imagine if he runs a four six oh at the at the combine? I mean, his stock's gonna just completely yeah, just, it won't be great. It'll fall apart. Like four five five. Okay, I like four five five. I like where he's at, his size, what he has. Um, but I mean he's listed at 205, 209. It's not like he's an overly like 220 guy. Like I feel yeah. like when we look at him, like I think that's my biggest thing. What is his athletic testing gonna be? I think that's my concern um with him. But then with Tank. I will say I think Tucker maybe has a higher ceiling because I think Tank is what Tank is. I think Tucker is well if he runs a four a low end four five or a high end four four. Now we're talking about a guy that maybe could be a a workhorse. I agree with that. I think we're, there's three down potential for Sean Tucker. I think uh, Tank Bigsby is probably a, you know the front half of a committee. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. I like that call. All right, who you got? Hey, yeah. Pick. All right. I have Sean Tucker. I'll take Sean okay. Tucker. I like Sean Tucker outright ahead of Tank Bigsby. Um, I would take him ahead of Tank Bigsby in drafts. So uh, I think he was going, what, two spots behind Bigsby? Uh, yeah, he's going He's going about two basically running backs and about four picks. Okay, yeah, I'll take the discount on Sean Tucker. Uh, I like him a little bit more just for the potential of, you know, hopefully realizing a three-down roll. All right, I'm taking Tank. We're going to disagree again on this one. I like yes. to disagree. Yeah, me too. You know, <laughs> I'm just going to take Tank just because I have less athletic concerns with Tank. I think I know what he is, and if he can sneak into that day two draft capital with his upside, and I think he has more size that he can put on than Sean, and I think that it's not going to hurt his athleticism as much. So I'm going to lean there. And I do think Tank has receiving ability. I just That Auburn offense is so bad, Anthony. Like, it, yeah, it, they're not good. And even with Gus, he wasn't very good with Gus there either. Like they didn't have that ability to kind of project him anywhere. I don't think he's been highlighted. I wish he would have transferred because I think if yeah. he would transfer somewhere, he could have maybe found a role for himself that actually elevated his skills and stuff. I don't know if that's going to be there this year, but I think he's going to get the volume he needs to show kind of NFL teams what he is. And if he doesn't in the SEC, that's a little bit better than the ACC. I don't know if you've seen defenses in the ACC, not the <laughs> – not the not the toughest in the world, but I, I do think that when you're looking at it from an SEC perspective, if he can get 1,200 yards in the SEC and show that he can be more a little bit more athletic and test well, I think he gets better draft capital than Sean. Yeah, it's not it's not crazy at all. I mean, we said it at the beginning. Tank Bigsby probably just had the quietest double digit touchdown, almost 1,100 yard season in the yeah. SEC that you could imagine. So if he can, uh, you know, even move those numbers up just a little bit, uh, he's definitely got a chance to go higher than Sean. Yeah. So, hey, we'll see. We're, this would be an interesting one. I want to follow this one for the rest of the season because it'll. Yeah. These these two guys is it's very interesting because I think that they're very mid tier prospects that could they their value is going to go all over the board. Like yeah, I oh, think yeah. as the season goes, we're going to be talking about these guys, you know, as being that back end. I think when I did my mock, I had I had Tucker at the one twelve, and I think I had uh, Bigsby as like the two hundred two or two hundred three for my football guys mock. I did back in like March or May, like way way early, way too early, right after the draft. Um, but I think it's the, I don't think that's out of the question. These guys are going to be shifting all, all across the board at that at basically at that time. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate you. Let us know, Syracuse fans. Tell me I'm an idiot in the comments. Hit that <laughs> like button, please. Hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you guys. If you like the series, let us know. Uh, you know, check out our Patreon, check out our podcast, and we'll see you guys next time when we do a little bit more of this or that.